Hey. Hello, guys. Sorry we're a little late. Um, we actually were doing a, an intro um, interview with the uh, famous from Jack LaLanne fitness guru, Forbes Riley. Forbes Riley. Riley. Who's also had her own show uh, in New York as well. She's become a friend and we were talking about how to avoid the COVID-15. <laughs> you know, we all know the freshman 15. So, but unfortunately we got all technical difficulty. We're gonna do it tomorrow. Hey, Eric. Hey, Big Eric. Um, we're gonna be doing it tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Uh, Dave Rendall, our good friend Dave. We got to have a great interview with Dave this week. It'll be yeah. fun. I think, I actually think we just released it on our Family Friday interview series. Yeah, so we've gotten to talk to Dave Dendapani, our friend Philip McKernan, oh, and Mr. Hartman, Jason Hartman hey, I did Jason. a an investor one yesterday with. And we are going to be talking today. We've had a lot of families. We're trying to get input for what people want to talk about. Hey, Jen. And it's overcoming financial struggles uh, without harming your family life. Um, we think that's a pretty big subject. And it's funny. When I, the more I get to know entrepreneurs, all of us have that downtime, that absolute almost fall off the cliff. Now, mine came in 2008. You know, no way are Jamie and I sitting here saying we're bulletproof. Um, yeah, Jason, I know we've had great conversations around this. We're not bulletproof, but gosh, we are so much better prepared now than we were in 2008. Um, 2008 was a really, really tough time for me. And I, I talk openly about it. I mean, I came that close to bankruptcy. But some really good things came out of it um, that I wanted to share that I think can help people that are struggling today. Uh, and first thing, I, I have to remind all of you that are watching this, if you're having financial struggles, having financial setbacks, please remember it is not your family's fault. And that might sound simplistic, but stop and think about that for a minute. You're going through struggles, things aren't working, maybe your whole industry has been shut down. That, that's really unfortunate, but it is not your family's fault. It's not your spouse's fault, definitely not your children's fault. And we can get wrapped up in front of the people that are in front of us and, and, and take this personally. That is a really bad idea. Um, and it's sad, Jamie and I have been watching, you know, we're involved with some foster care um, and trying to support different groups and the amount of abuse calls have skyrocketed. Yeah, abuse. And now um, Hubbard House here has, has uh, enacted a texting campaign so that you can, you can text them discreetly if you um, are having trouble with an abuser or an assaulter. So there's just, what, what we're finding is that there's such an increase of being trapped with your family and then maybe taking out taking it out on them. frustration on family. I, I, I'm, I'd like to think that none of our tribe here, but we all suffer with various things. I know yesterday you and I were talking at the end of the day and I'm like, well, I really nailed this, this, and this today, but I like really sucked at these two moments. <laughs> and then I was like normal the rest of the day. So, you know, I, I, we were reflecting on how could I do that better, but we've been talking a lot about how children, even children are feeling are getting to given a little bit of the brunt of of our frustration if we're not mindful yeah. you know or, or, or treating them almost like it's their fault and it, it's not it's not your spouse's fault it's not your child's fault that's been kind of our overall theme of, of a lot of the private calls we've had say just remember it's not your family's fault and again I would ingrain that it's been so important for me even when I get a little bit of a short call and again I feel so lucky comparatively to where I was in 2008. Uh, but still, we all still have shortness in things where we're trying to help people. Uh, and we wanna make sure that our family is not put to the side, that our family is not put on the chopping block. Um, I find that to be really serious. And if, if and people are having, oh, go ahead. No, I, well, I was just gonna say, and also to find whatever they are struggling with, and we may have talked on this last week, that whatever they're struggling with is also valid. So just because yeah. you're working so hard to pay the mortgage and keep things situated, you have to keep in mind that that they're having struggles too. Uh, in fact, I've noticed, like Jim said, you know, we're dealing um, with, with our foster training and some of the stuff that we do in the community. We're seeing that children are exhibiting some traumatic behaviors, almost as though they've experienced trauma. So they're outlashes, they're more physical, they might not be able to communicate themselves, they may be regressing in behavior. And so these are all signs of like PT PTSD or trauma. And what we're not realizing as parents because we're so busy taking care of everybody and all of our own things that we're not taking a moment to realize that it's not just stressful for us, it's also stressful for our children who are experiencing these times that they've never experienced. They're watching their parents struggle under other things. So just keeping in mind that, that pain, fear, trauma is all relative. And while you might be experiencing it on what feels like such a huge, covering your face, such a huge, um, 
volume it, to them and their little world, what they're experiencing is, is yeah. just as big, as monumental. We have a habit of belittling. Like, are you kidding me? I'm running two businesses right now trying to protect a bunch of people and you're just missing playing with your friends. You know, it's easy for me to say that at 45, and I did in the beginning, and then I'm like, you know what? This would have been huge for me if I was 16 years old and I couldn't go out with any of my friends, do any things I like to do. It would have felt like the world was ending. So, you know, you gotta keep the, don't belittle your family's problems, and it's certainly not their hey, fault. Uh, it's cool to see uh, relatives from Ireland on here right now. Good, good day, yeah. um, and Mitch. So, uh, sorry, lost my train of thought right I'm there. I'm sorry, not, I try to discreetly say hello to As people. we deal with our heaviness, it's not their fault, and that's something that I tell myself all the time. I wanna talk about, again, financial distress, because a lot of people um, don't really wanna talk about this, and this is something you can share with your friends. The best thing I ever did in 2008 is I picked up the phone at 3 a.m. and I called my good friend in Australia, who's been like a mentor to me, and I said, look, I've painted myself in a corner, uh, I'm embarrassed, I'm ashamed, uh, but I think I'm gonna go broke. Uh, and right there, I heard him flapping the pages uh, of his of his planner and said, I'll be there in seven days. Or it was eight days. He'll be there in eight days. And we put together a plan, and I survived 2008 when most real estate investors went bankrupt. Uh, and we protected our investors. It came through, and I know that set us in the trajectory to have a better real estate investment company and our family education company yeah. together. Um, so you got to have 3 a.m. friends. When you practice pandemics yeah. <laughs> right yeah no it's... when you're well practiced at catastrophes. yeah we're, and we're gonna we're gonna ha have more catastrophes and right. that's what I've come that's to right. realize and I feared another 2008 coming for so long and once this got here I'm like I'm better prepared I'm smarter and there's more things that I'm um, uh, feeling blessed for so I don't, I'm not even gonna let this one get to me and I think Jamie will share because she would call me out right here on I've taken this in complete stride. I've had sure my short moments, but for the most part, I've been like, I'm not gonna let this get me down. I'm gonna help as many people as I can and hold together and watch over my, my business teams and that's the best I can do. Uh, so, and it's it's been healthy. It hasn't been easy to keep that attitude, but it has. And, and I think that it lesson- It helps to happen. stay focused and yeah. to keep that mindfulness that we're all in this together. Like you and I are in this together, yeah. us and the children are in this together, and then we're in this together you know, with our community too, but just knowing that we really aren't isolated in this event. I think sometimes it can feel very lonely, but right exactly. now is the time in which we just are all and that's, all in it. that's key, lonely. So 3 a.m. friends, you have to pick up the phone. Don't feel like you're a burden. Just because you ask for help doesn't mean you're helpless. And tell someone, if you're having money struggles, go to someone who's close to you and tell them. And I'm gonna go over into two things of that. You know, let them know you're struggling in business. I keep talking to people, you know, that that have reached out to me and I feel really lucky. And I have my core group that I talk to about how do I navigate this if this happens? How do I navigate that? And sharing that is absolutely key. You gotta have 3 a.m. friends. Now 3 a.m. friends is someone you can pick up the call, it's absolutely key. Um, two things though that I gotta tell you about 3 a.m. friends. You should reach out to people for help, whether you're struggling in your career, you're, you're stressed out, family life, reach out. There's two types of people though. There's people that can give you moral support which is great, and there's people that can give you technical support. And this is a really important thing that I, I have to distinguish. Moral support, take as much as you can get. People that can say, we're rooting for you, I can listen, um, happy to chat about it, that's really important. More, uh, technical support is a little different, and this is especially for our business owner friends. Like I have business owner friends that are in retail. I don't know anything about retail. I've never been in retail. It's not my expertise. I can give them some overall parameters of things I did in 08 to survive, but it's not all gonna translate. I don't have the technical support uh, to help them. Um, it's, it's just, I, it's not in my wheelhouse. And the danger is, I know back in 08, I started to take technical from support from people that didn't know my business, didn't understand it. Their ten intentions might have been well-meaning, but they weren't in the position. So if you're having a struggle, if you're in medical, you're in retail, you're in, I don't know what it is, I would go to someone specifically that has been there, done that in your field. A specialist or a genius a or an expert, yeah, someone you know. For, for technical support. Moral support, take it from everyone. Um, and it's not only about money. Again, my mentors didn't hand me money in 2008. They helped me strategize. And the strategy was more important than, than, the, um, than money itself. A little bit of writing a check at that point, we were so imploded, it wouldn't have done any good. It would have gone into a black hole. It was strategy to climb out and just knowing I could vent to someone that made all the difference. So I just really wanna challenge, 
Remember, it's not your family's fault and have some 3 a.m. friends. Who can you call and pick up and who can call you at 3 a.m. and you're going to take their call and not judge them and do that. That's been a huge thing. I mean, I'm lucky that Jamie and I, I think are, that's my closest 3 a.m. friend. Yeah. Uh, but we also have a, a closer core of 3 a.m. friends that can call us and some of them we can see are on, on this call right now. Um, but remember that too, there's moral support and technical support. Be very careful if you're navigating your business through some tough times to take technical support from someone that's not really able to make that call or make that judgment from experience. Um, what do you have to add to that, Ernie? No, I was just going to say, it sounded like you were listing reminders of the things that you had already talked about. So I was just going to say also, you know, it not being your family's, hey Cam, your family's fault and to understand that you are that team unit and then also to have the, the empathy and the sympathy to know that while we're experiencing this trauma and this des devastation and this distance, um, so are our children and we're all going to deal with it differently. So giving that compassion and empathy to each other and to our children uh, is huge right now. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and I think you said it earlier this week, when we set the tone as the parents. Yeah, if yeah. we're worked up, cranky, all over the place, that's going to that's gonna move. If we're laying in bed till 10 o'clock depressed, guess how that's going to fall out. So Yeah, you set the tone for your environment. That's, yeah. that's a great point. We did. We talked about that maybe in an interview earlier this week. Just thinking of, even though it's a crazy storm around you, inside your home gets to be exactly how you want to design it. And if something goes awry, you get to be the one to bring it back on course. So a question that I always ask myself when things are a little rough, I started out the beginning of this saying that I nailed two or three things yesterday, two or three things I could have done better and the rest of the time I was pretty normal. But the two or three things that could have been done better, I reflected and thought, okay, once I was a little cranky because I didn't eat. Another time, the kids were a little cranky because they got up early to see the sunrise and maybe I should have built in a resting period. So anyways, I, I just always try to be reflective and bring it back to myself. What am I doing within myself, within my environment to really set the tone for the other people that are in our environment, whether it be your spouse or your children, just taking that accountability that we, we all play a role in what we're experiencing in our homes right now. Yeah, and setting the tone too doesn't, you can keep some schedules. Like for right. example, people have said, are you letting your kids, your teens sleep till noon because they're missing it? The answer is no. We'll let them sleep in on the weekends, but we want to keep some regularity, and we think that's our duty. Where you know that keeping certain rhythms and disciplines is going to create more freedom and relax and lower anxiety. I just our take, and that's been asked a lot. What are you doing with that? Yeah. Our teens are still out of bed early every morning. We're going to have their school out of the way in the morning so it's done, and then they can enjoy the rest of the day. And we found that if you let that slide and you start late, things just don't go as well. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to, to to hold certain routines there. Not because you're trying to be a stickler, but you're, you're again, you're setting that tone, um, and that's really important. Something I wanted to talk about uh, real quick, too. One of the best things that we're doing right now, guys, is the mealtime challenge. Go with your family. Pick a meal. We encourage 30 minutes, but we're doing two hours. We've worked ourselves up to that, but start with 30 minutes. We're trying to set dinner at the same time and turn everything off. No news, no phones, no threads, no, no tweets, whatever no it is. Work. Nothing. Everything's off. And then they get to have conversation and we ask that question every day. What's the best part of the day? What was the weirdest part of the day? And it doesn't mean two hours of like sitting there staring at each no, other. We, our dinner time just lasts anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. Um, believe it or not with toddlers, we do get up a lot in those 30 to 45 minutes. But just asking some of those questions, that what was the best part of the day? What was the weirdest part of the day? Another thing we like to do is when we're, when, the, when all this is done, we're going to blank. So go on a date. Yeah. Um, drink out. wine outside of my house. <laughs> I don't know, some of these other things. And so just playing a game or what's the hardest part of all of this? That's what's been a so great question. So we've been asking, and that was a surprising answer, was what's been, and each person answers all the way. Sammy did his best. He didn't give the, the most sensible <laughs> answer, but what's been the hardest part of this lockdown for you? And you'll be surprised at the answers you got. It gave me a lot of clarity, especially with what my teen sons are going through our teen sons. For sure, but so. I wanted to get back to, um, so it's not two hours of time that we take just sitting and staring at each other. We end up, we do dinner, we clean up dinner, and then usually we either jump on the trampoline, we go outside. Sometimes the boys might be in one, the big kids, I should say, are in one place while the rest of us are bike riding or, you know, it's just kind of an active available time where they're available to one another, but it may not be two hours all together, or it might be, but dinner time is definitely all together. So that's been the one challenge that we wanna to set to you guys that we've been setting um, on interviews is just to, to start at 30 minutes, turn off all electronics, sit down to a meal, and really um, enjoy each other. Yeah. 
There was a rumor that people were sneaking onto the beach, but I don't know who that was. What does that have to do with anything? About oh, after camp. dinner, yeah, oh. while in camp. So anyway, I think they're opening the beaches now, which we're joke. thrilled God, about. That never happens around you here. You never I'm get sorry. my jokes anyway, so that's not a surprise. It has not gotten any funnier. Let us. Well, that's for sure. I, we're working on it too. But how can we help you, guys? Let us know how we can help you. We're trying to be very vulnerable uh, through this whole thing. There is no perfect family. You know, we've had our setbacks, arguments, hey, uh, little ones melting down, teen grumpiness. But I remember last night at dinner um, with our adopted fifth, Isaiah, the only person we allow in the house at this time, mm -hmm. we were belly laughing at the table. And that felt really good. So, so just try to make the most of this. We don't know exactly what's happening. Um, but we are we are creating some good moments and that's uh, that's what I think this is about. Hey Terry and then another Terry So isn't that funny? So any anything else that we were gonna go over this week? I don't want to keep people on uh, too um, I think we we're gonna talk so we did a great interview with Dave Rendell of Freak Factor this week And Love I believe Dave. that's what was released next week should be done to Pani. So we had to do a little switcheroo um, on our live interviews, but that should be released to you guys as well as the um, if you're on our email list, if you're not, you should be. Um, 18summers.com, sign up for that email list. We send tons of content, um, sometimes more there than here because we, I don't know, we never know how much you wanna hear. So um, the, e the email has the interview in there. We'll post it on here as well. Dave Rendell, he's awesome, freak factor. He did a lot to change. Um, Huge. Just our perspectives on strengths and weaknesses and with, with ourselves, with our children, with our relationship with one another. So it'd be amazing for you to um, check that out, listen to that interview. It's a really, really good one, especially getting to know your children in this time. He talks about how interesting it is to see how some people are thriving in this environment that didn't thrive um, in like a normal environment and to just see how our strengths and weaknesses have played into uh, yeah. this quarantine time. So check out that interview for sure. And um, it's Terry just saying they've too. had laughs too. Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah. Sorry, I usually wear my glasses on these so I'm not like pressing my face <laughs> up against the screen. Anyway, so that's um, about all there is next week. Again, we're just trying to release content to you guys and um, it's good to see you yeah. here and we love hearing from you. Anything you need or anything you wanna share, we're always yeah. loving it. All I would say too is this will pass. I know uh, Leland said, Mom, what's today's date? And Jamie said April 57th. So, and I'm um, pretty sure well, I'm gonna like totally have this nailed right when we get like released yeah. from. Quarantine. But enjoy the process, have a good weekend. Remember your 3 a.m. friends, don't be afraid to ask for help doesn't make you helpless and there's gonna be friends that can give you moral support and technical support for my entrepreneur friends that's really important uh, not to shoot anyone down or or, or take away but um, moral support and technical support use that and remember any of these issues going on aren't your family's fault so love them the best you can yeah and we're all experiencing our own our own journey right now whether yeah. we're 45 or 4 so yeah. Well, we'll see you guys next week for Family Friday. Just wanted to check in. Please stay in touch and let us know what uh, what we can help with. All right. Take care. Take care, guys.